All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Lorenzo here from QXIP. And we're going to just uh, continue uh, what Alessandro started. So now that you know everything about events and how to troubleshoot Janus in real time, we're going to see how to uh, extend on the concept and see how we can apply this to a non-real time case. So uh, it's the case of a headless Homer today. So if you have used Homer for VoIP, this is a little different. So uh, today we're going to be using pieces of Homer uh, to get the job done, but we're not actually going to use Homer itself as you know it. So that's going to be uh, a little less elements. Before we get into that, a little bit about us. I'm the uh, CEO at QXIP. We're uh, based in Amsterdam. We're behind Homer, the HEP protocol, and a bunch of other things. We spend our day uh, forging and creating packet capture monitoring solutions. We do a little bit of everything. We have lawful interception. We have unlawful interception. We have a bunch of stuff that we're doing. But mostly, you know, our passion is about capturing stuff, correlating uh, packets, events, sessions, whatever it is, taking challenges and, uh, and trying to you know, glue things together to make it easier for people to figure them out. That's that's what we care about. So we're always looking you know, for the next uh, uh, challenge and Janus was the, the perfect uh, uh, case for us to you know take Homer in a slightly different direction. So as Lorenzo said, we've been uh, working together quite a lot over the last few years, getting uh, you know first the events. Uh, well, for, it was first me learning you know about what was inside of Janus. Then uh, Lorenzo was kind enough to uh, come up with this awesome idea of event handlers, and uh, from there it kind of evolved. Uh, in a few directions. So before we get into that, uh, what is Homer? For those who maybe don't know or are confused, uh, Homer is nowadays, it started as a you know all-in-one application, uh, basically an island where you know you could capture packets to a database, mostly uh, of course VoIP-centric, SIP-centric. So we started on the left side. Uh, as you know, HEP is our encapsulation format. It's natively supported in a bunch of platforms thanks to their uh, authors and maintainers that are uh, you know, kind enough to uh, allow our technology into their stack to make everybody's life easier, hopefully. Uh, today we're talking about the top part, but you know, it's a full stack. So we have uh, ready agents within a bunch of applications. We have dynamic collectors for uh, the RTC uh, ecosystem, which basically means getting a bunch of uh, unstructured events and parsing them into something uh, intelligible. And then we have uh, the do-it-yourself part where we have a bunch of libraries, snippets of code so that you can uh, actually implement HEP into your own application script or whatnot. So uh, generally speaking, it's an open uh, monitoring and troubleshooting platform in our concept. Uh, it's designed to uh, handle real protocols and invented protocols just the same. So mapping concept, if we, you know, if we can parse something, then we can make sense of it. We can correlate it with other events. So the idea is to keep it as open as we can for people to to um, to capture uh, stuff, even their own. So if you if you're designing your own signaling protocol and you wanna implement it or you want to be supported in Omer, you can actually do it yourself just by creating a mapping schema for your data. Um, let's assume that everything at some point gets converted into a JSON object, as long as it's not binary stuff and uh, parse, search, and so on. Uh, the focus is, again, on uh, uh, indexing and correlation. So uh, nobody cares about just uh, you know seeing one packet. We care about seeing end-to-end -end flows. We care about understanding how we go from a protocol to the next one, how sessions uh, latch together, how things come together in general. So this is what we were after here. Um, in the latest uh, generations of Homer, we have a, um, basically an open approach to the, the backend part. So in the original versions, we were using our own database. If you liked it, good. If you didn't like it, good. We didn't care. Today, we take a completely different approach because people are, uh, the, the world has changed. You're collecting a bunch of data. You're using a bunch of uh, already uh, systems to uh, graph it together, to do alerting. So what we wanted to do is just integrate and uh, become a pluggable part of existing ecosystems. A bunch of times when we go to, uh, to uh, you know, when we work with customers, they already monitor something. Maybe it's as simple as you know the uptimes or the memory consumption of their systems. What we want to do is make them able to uh, plug uh, data that Homer can uh, capture, generate, and correlate into their existing flow, so that they can just you know have additional data that can uh, plug together. 
uh, we have our own agents, but as you have seen in the previous slide, you can also make your own. And then uh, we want to be a building block for uh, other products and platforms. So uh, Homer is not longer designed to be just Homer. It comes with a bunch of pieces that you can use to make uh, your own version of uh, the same if you're willing to spend a lot of time. So uh, a few warnings. If you use Homer, you might run into the following issues. You're going to learn a bunch of stuff. If you're scared of data, if you're scared of learning, if you're scared of events, do not use it. <laughs> so what is Homer 2 Janus? Uh, we are a perpetual uh, collector of events, either we are the HTTP or MQTT plugins. Uh, we have multiple options for the backend, so you can choose where the events will uh, eventually land, and we'll see how. Uh, we do a bunch of tagging, so uh, in specifically uh, here talking about the media events that Alessandro just showed you, you you're going to get a bunch of those every few minutes, and you know it's quite. Uh, I mean, w I don't think a human would be expected to be reading those one by one. So a lot of the work has been around parsing those uh, events and those reports, getting the tags from the events, and letting you write them to a time series database. So we convert those things to time series, and we'll see how. Um, specific to the type 32 and we'll see. And then a community, of course. So uh, there's other people that are solving your same challenges within our ecosystem. Uh, not a bunch of exchange, but this is something that we would like to push more. Uh, little note, everything that you'll see today is Janus uh, focused, but uh, the, the technology works just the same for uh, MediaSoup, uh, which also is able to uh, emit some events, and uh, the uh, Jitsi Meet, uh, Meet uh, browser events uh, that we're also able to collect and, and handle just the same way. So, uh, just a little recap what are Janus events. Alessandro explained all of them, but I just wanted to make a little bit of a, you know enumeration. So, those are the types that you would mostly see um, flowing through. So session events, handle events, uh, the uh, JSF SDP stuff, the WebRTC, mostly the media events is what we're going to be uh, crunching, uh, plugin events, and so on. So everything that goes through a system, every type uh, that already exists or will exist in the future uh, will be handled by our uh, application. Uh, as we said, there's a few flavors of Homer. Nowadays, we have uh, really dozens of flavors, so I, I've tried to assemble uh, just as many options as I could. So we have a repository, Homer 7 Docker, uh, on our GitHub, on the Seed Capture GitHub, where you can find all of the options that we have already assembled. Here, I just listed a few, the most popular ones, so you can build it nowadays, uh, sending metrics to Prometheus, Victoria metrics, InfluxDB, Elasticsearch, and beyond. Uh, you can use um, different types of backends and even different types of user interfaces. So if you don't like the, the Homer UI or you don't need the Homer UI, so if you don't do search, you just you know analyze the data that you're receiving, uh, you can do so. So today, we're going to be using the bottom option that you see there. So we're going to launch um, a Homer setup, which is actually going to be using only Hepop, which is one of our capture servers. We're not going to use a core database, so we're not going to save anything uh, in, a, in a database. We're just going to log everything as events, uh, and we're going to write metrics to InfluxDB. The UI today will be Grafana. So there's going to be no Omer UI uh, in this uh, specific case. You can, by all means, uh, deploy it if you want to, but for the purpose of today's presentation, I want to show a headless Omer, which means none of our dependencies, none of our uh, elements for displaying data. Omer today for you will be a data processor, collector, and emitter of sorts. So um, as I said, we're going to be using HEPOP. And perhaps most of you have never heard of it. And I'll show you how I know. Uh, HEPOP is a standalone HEP server. So the previous versions of Omer you might be familiar with were uh, you know, sitting on the shoulders of giants. So they required OpenSIPs or Camailio. Uh, to do the core part. Those were the days where we were SIP-centric, so it kind of made sense. Today, we have a totally different approach. So we have two uh, standalone capture servers, Applify server and Hepop, which are uh, well, kind of doing the same job in different ways. So Applify server, which is the one that we deploy by default, is still a little bit SIP-centric and is performance-focused. So it's something that we designed to be able to handle as many packets as possible, and it does a streamlined job. Hepop is a little different. It's a Node.js uh, application, and it's designed mostly for you know the RTC side or the dynamic side, so collecting events that we don't know anything about and making it easy for people 
to, to support and implement them. Uh, it supports a bunch of uh, storage and time series options. I uh, dropped a few here. You can write to Postgres, RethinkDB, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, and Loki for the most part. And it can generate time series to InfluxDB, Prometheus, Victoriametrics, and Elasticsearch. I forgot that one. Uh, it can handle about 15K packets per second per thread, so not too shabby. And uh, yeah, it's just a minimalistic uh, capture server that I'm going to use for this purpose. So what is the data flow today? RTC Homer plus Janus means that uh, we're going to configure Janus to um, ship events to HEPOP, which is going to open a, a JSON socket either via HTTP, HTTPS, or MQTT. Thank you all. That's your, that's on you. And uh, it's going to process those, and then it's going to split the data and uh, route it to different platforms depending on how it's categorized. Um, the Janus events, as you have seen before, are uh, JSON objects, really, that describe something that happened uh, in time. So all of them are logged as they are, and they're made searchable uh, within Loki in this demo. Type 32 are converted into time series. So uh, my personal preference is to uh, process them, extract the data, and throw them away. So I don't want to keep all of those uh, huge JSON objects anywhere once I process them. So I kind of you know synthesize them into uh, tagged time series, and we'll see how, and I only keep those. Some people prefer to keep both. It's totally your choice. Uh, once we do this, it means that all of those uh, metrics that you have seen in Alessandro's uh, presentation for the type 32 are actually converted into metrics that are tagged. So, um, of course, the, the point here is to make it easy for you to visualize them over time. So the case of the previous presentation was mostly real-time troubleshooting, but what if the issue happened yesterday, last week, last month, last night? I don't know, when you were out of the office or you didn't have access to the uh, real-time troubleshooting, and that's where we're going with this. So uh, ultimate goal, spinning up a system that's collecting all of these events, uh, tracking them, allowing you to build uh, dashboards, alerting, and and so on on top of that, so that when you, you know, when you receive uh, a case, you have somewhere to go and do a historical troubleshooting or figure out what happened to what or who. Um, as said, I have uh, Docker containers for just about everything today, so uh, this is uh, exactly the case. Um, if you want to spin this up, you can. All you need is Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, I have there a few instructions. So if you pull the Homer 7 Docker repository, you'll find uh, two folders, one for Amplify Server, one for Hepop, inside of which you have all of the variants that we support ready to spin up. Uh, in this case, we have this uh, Homer 7 RTC Janus um, uh, folder, where inside we have prepared a uh, fully working recipe. So this is actually going to spin up uh, Janus, uh, configure the event handlers, configure HEPOP, so it's the full circuit for you to play with. So if we spin it up, uh, what we end up with is uh, Janus running on uh, uh, its uh, standard parts. We're going to have HEPOP running as a collector and uh, a service. We're going to have InfluxDB, Loki, and Grafana. So those are the elements of uh, today's presentation. When you spin it up, uh, the configuration is the one that you see down here. So we, the event handlers are configured to ship everything to HEPOP. Of course, in uh, Docker land, we just call everything by name. So HEPOP is HEPOP, Influx is Influx, and Loki is Loki. Translate it to your real life scenario if you choose to deploy outside of Docker. Of course, I hope this makes sense to everyone. Um, so Janus shipping to HEPOP, HEPOP splitting between Loki and InfluxDB. Uh, mind, this is not a binary choice, so you can enable multiple backends and multiple collectors at the same time. So you can uh, even fork the data to uh, to more than a platform. Once it's up, of course, you have access to the uh, admin uh, interface, so the same things that uh, Alessandro was doing before you can still do in this demo, but we don't care. So uh, today we're only going to be looking at uh, the historical aspects of collecting those Janus events. So in the demo, or my approach to, to create this demo was to just uh, spin up a video room, we logged on, we, uh, we left for a few minutes, and then uh, we let the, uh, the circuit collect some of those events. Now it gets graphic. Watch out. Grafana, how many of you are using uh, Grafana in the room? Everyone, perfect. So, um, Grafana, generic collector, why am I using it? Just because it's popular and a lot of people use it for other purposes. Again, 
the key point here is not to create another island where you have to go and troubleshoot. Oh, I have a problem. I have to open Homer. How does it look? How does it work? I have charts here, charts there. People get confused and, you know, we, we get the opposite results. We want to speed up the process of troubleshooting, not slow it down. So this is why I'm not going to be using the Homer UI today. I want you to imagine this being just a plugin to your existing stack. So you already have all of your stuff in Grafana. Now you can also have the Janus metrics in Grafana to play with and intersect. So, you know, you have a uh, packet loss. Is the same system also having uh, CPU spikes? Is it out of memory? You know, you can kind of uh, intersect uh, the, the metrics that you're collecting to get to the point. You know, sometimes things are just a consequence of uh, something else. And that's where we're going with this. So in Grafana, we're collecting uh, the metrics that Janus is uh, emitting and the logs. As you know, Grafana today is changing. So it's no longer just a, a graphing application uh, for doing charts. It started uh, handling events. They, uh, they released Loki, which is a generic log collector with regex capabilities. How many of you know Loki? Much less. You should research it. Loki is really powerful. And if you use Grafana, you really, really should take a look into it. Um, we also have a, a, a C Locky version of it that uses different mechanics, but something for another presentation. But I really, really suggest to look into it. It's using the same uh, tagging uh, format as uh, Prometheus. So data goes in the simplest way, uh, and the method to select it is uh, by tags. So uh, this is what a, a, you know our uh, video room playing look like when we uh, check the statistics. And as you can see, the packet loss uh, chart is really uh, shining here. We're losing a lot of packets. And uh, how do we know who's behind it? And that's really the, the, the point. So uh, there you go. There's a, there's a dip there that I imagine. Oops, skip, wrong side. There's a dip there that I imagine all of you would love to see uh, happen. So uh, if you miss those events coming in real time, or if you were not there when the customer was complaining, which I think would be 100% of the times. So I cannot imagine a case where you're actually on the phone with the customer as they're experiencing the issue. So at least in my view, it's important to have a, you know, a solid historical view of all of your data. Well, so what happens when we tag those events? Here I have just a few examples. So here we have those type 32 events, and we want to group by something, right? So we have uh, session tags, handle tags, and a bunch of other headers uh, that allow us to kind of locate this data within our uh, Janus server. And that's what we're trying to do here. So in this case, I'm looking at the jitter metrics, and I'm uh, grouping them by media type and session ID. I don't even know if that makes sense, but hopefully it does. So uh, in this case, I know what the jitter is for a specific stream type, and uh, I group it by the session which it was attached to. So if you're troubleshooting that way, this tells you, you know, where where the issue falls, at least in terms of uh, that aspect. Maybe more interesting is looking at actual problems here. So uh, same approach, but this time I'm looking at packet loss, and I'm grouping by media type and opaque ID. So in this case, I can get a little closer to the user that's having the problem. And as you can see there, I have a few sessions, and there are counters. So I know that uh, video room, whatever, 6.3, uh, whatnot, is losing a bunch of packets. And I want to know who they are. How do we do that? By using Loki. So right now, I'm collecting metrics that point at potential issues, which are contained in other events that we have collected. So we kind of jump in between you know, two sides uh, of the ring here. On one side is just metrics. On the other side, we have the actual events that we can search through. And this is what Loki does. So in Loki, as you see here, I'm going to create a query that looks for everything that's not a type 32 event, because I already know what the 32 event was saying. And I want to find everything that contains video room test 6.3, WR, et cetera, et cetera. So getting closer to the user. And that's exactly what we get if we make that query. So we find out that we have two moments in time on our timeline where we have received events that contain this video tag. I know this is too small, so let's zoom in. And that's exactly what you would get. So those are the events that Janus has uh, speeded out, uh, filtered by those attempts. So we can see that the session is trying, it's get connected, and then we can see the selected pair. So the same thing that we were doing in real time, now we can do on an historical uh, timeline. So we can find out, all right, those are where the IPs that they were using, and probably figure out who the user is, who the customer is, or you know where the network aspect, let's say, of this problem. Right? Is this making sense to everyone? 
we'll get to that. Uh, so um, we know the parts, we know the IPs, and we know what's uh, behind the um, uh, the events. This, of course, I didn't have time to make a hundred million examples. And to be honest, you know, I'm a lightweight user of Janus, so probably many of you right now can picture scenarios where uh, a specific, uh, you know, event or a specific uh, step of uh, the the uh, the setup or uh, the uh, you know the room access uh, spin up or spin off spin down whatever it is that you're interested into you'll find within those events the events you can keep them for as long as you please so you know most people troubleshoot within uh, hours or days from the event it's very rare that somebody's gonna call you and say i had an issue six months ago could you look into it i mean no uh, so this is designed to uh, look into a short period of time with a high accuracy. Uh, the metrics, you can probably keep them for months because they're really, really lightweight. The events can kind of, you know, accumulate into a, a really heavy bunch. So that's totally up to you how you're going to design it. And again, I'm using Loki here because I like it and it's uh, so lightweight and streamlined that I uh, that it, it really works for me. But you could be using Elasticsearch, you could be using any of the other databases uh, that you prefer. And Grafana is, is also implementing support for more backends for the logging uh, search and view. So this is a moving picture and we just want to be part of it. So what do we do with these things? Uh, everything. Uh, the, the point is to go use them and abuse them. So Homer now can be a headless uh, collector of those events. You can choose which one of those you want to parse, which one of those you want to keep, where you want to write them. If you don't want to write them anywhere, you can choose to extract metrics from them, write them in time series, ship them where you want. Uh, that's headless, at least in my view. So completely eliminating the need for our UI to do the job and giving you the freedom of uh, routing this information where it's uh, convenient or where your support team and guys need it the most, right? hope this makes sense. So uh, does any of you are, you, are you guys creating alerts in Grafana or using any other platforms just by raising hands? Nobody's doing alerts? Yes. Yeah, are you building alerts on top of time series? In Grafana? Prometheus? Great. It works just the same. So the, uh, the emitter supports Prometheus. So again, for this demo, you know, I want it to be lazy and I use what I'm familiar with. But we support any type uh, of output at the same time. So again, the, the, the key point here is freedom of choice. So no longer Homer as an island, but Homer as a, you know, a set of modular elements that you can use to build your own uh, troubleshooting solution the way you want it or the way your support team needs it to be fast. So the point is being fast, not learning the way I want to do it or the way somebody else is doing it, but just having the parts to build your own. All right, so uh, what I'm hoping here is that, you know, you know somebody's going to try it, really. So the, uh, the containers that you'll find on the repository cover all of the cases that we support. So Prometheus guy, I hope you're going to go and try the Prometheus uh, container, which, of course, comes with, you know, all of the, the tools of the trade. So each one of those bundles has a different config, same elements, completely different output. Uh, so I'm hoping you're going to use it and abuse it and provide feedback. Without your feedback, this is going to die. So I really, really uh, need to ask everyone that's even just going to sniff it for a few minutes. Spend one more to give us feedback, please, because this way we can take it to the next step. I cannot possibly imagine what's inside everybody's mind. And, uh, you know, uh, I cannot, uh, you know, ask you all to become my customers and come to me to discuss it. This has got to be agnostic. It's got to be a community effort. People have to, you know, um, <laughs> be honest and straightforward. I, I tend to get a lot of, uh, you know, compliments about Homer. Oh, yeah, nice. I have it. I use it, whatever. But nobody's giving us feedback at all. We don't get any feedback from anyone, especially when it works. We only get it when it doesn't. But when it works, nobody's telling us how they're succeeding with it, right? And this sucks so bad. So I'm hoping, you know, uh, the the outcome of this is that, you know, some of you are going to uh, be willing to invest a few minutes letting me know if this works for you, if you see shortcomings in this approach, if you wish it did something else. That's how we're going to evolve the project. Otherwise, 
it's just gonna stay my you know imagination and i'm gonna imagine approaches that maybe are not realistic enough the technology allows this to be done really really fast so you know if somebody today comes up with an idea most likely tomorrow morning is ready monday you can use it right it's uh, it's so simple today to uh, interpolate data and uh, swap it around so that's my wish um there's also a few goodies so to get to this point we went through several stages of uh, research and development and i just wanted to share a few of those links uh, my favorite one is fajanus uh, for those that speak italian <laughs> it's a bird i also have parmigianus which is a, a different approach well it, it's been fun working with it. it's been a few years in the making so uh, we also have some uh, you know side elements to this so fajanus is a, a janus simulator so you can take all of the events and you can play them back uh, basically modifying the timestamp to be uh, real, so shifting them, you can capture all of those and uh, play them back. We use it for CI, so that we can uh, actually uh, validate and make sure it works without spinning it up every time. Uh, we have Pastash, which is an event uh, handler, transformer, and emitter. So this can receive, again, the Janus events, and you can transform them into something else. Let's say that you only are interested in one value, and you want to modify it, or you want to take an event handler, and you want to do a lookup uh, from an API that's going to tell me that's uh, uh, George, Mock, whatever. Uh, so this is designed to be sitting in the middle of events and collectors to, uh, to enhance them, enrich them, and so on. We have a decentralized uh, version of it too, where you can take those events and you can take them completely out of context using GandhiB and uh, ship them in a, into a decentralized network where you can uh, share information. It's a graph database, basically. You, we can write them into a decentralized graph database where multiple Janus instances can basically exchange data between each other and they can even do lookup and enrichment between them, which is really, really cool. And if you're into that kind of stuff, I suggest you look into it. And then, uh, of course, we have a, a bunch of recipes that allow you to do all of the above also with MediaSoup and Jitsi. It works just the same. Different events, different logic, different content, but the very same pipeline. So taking information, turning into a freedom of choice, and then just letting it flow. Now, just a few notes. I think it's, yeah, it's time for coffee. I'm sorry for keeping you late. Uh, supporting Homer. How many, just, it's going to take a minute. How many of you know or use Homer? Then how come this is happening? How's that possible? We have 44 stars. I call bullshit on this. So I really, really am begging you guys, if you use it, if you like it, if you support it, join us, star it, give feedback, open an issue, let us know, because this way projects die. This is how you kill a project and the people behind it. So we, we have uh, dozens and dozens of repositories with little modular pieces that a bunch of people are using. I would say we have many thousand users, and I'm being modest here, uh, and the main project has 525 stars. Bullshit. So please spread the word. If you know people that use it, if you use it yourself, I mean, it only takes a second to start. It takes a minute to open an issue. It takes 10 minutes to give feedback. It comes back to you in terms of uh, you know, an improved application, more options, more feedback, whatever it is. So that's the point. These are my details. I don't think we have time for questions, but you can ask me stuff in the coffee room where we're all going to be enjoying uh, goodies from the team. Thank you so much. Thank you.